Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How's it going? Dishnet34 here welcoming you to tonight's episode of This Week in Perfect Team. Episode number 177. It is Cooperstown Club 3 night, everybody. Hopefully all Thursdays are going well. Hopefully the last week in Perfect Team has gone well for you. Still coming down a little bit from 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 the awesome tops cards that were last week oh man i can't wait to see the next set of those coming out very soon but anyway that's not the focus of tonight we have cooperstown club three information tonight we have information on the perfect team master series that's going to be happening very soon this is an exciting night tonight i think so let's go ahead and get right to the action tonight. We have we have plenty of stuff to cover tonight. So let's get started. We start off with a look at the perfect league standings as of right now. Take a look at the perfect league standings. We start off in the American Conference East Division. And we start with the Puyallup Vikings at 62 and 38. Ten and a half games up on the Bard Owls. Holy cats. Big lead right there. And if you thought that was big, take a look at the AC Central. The Taito Albas at 65 and 35. 13 games up on the Rockland Razors right now. They're riding a 9 and 1 streak as of 8.30. Woo, 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 woo. Big stuff right there. Big lead right there. Um, in the American Conference West Divisions, we have the FFS Snails at 58 and 43. Just a half game up on the Spring Creek Gallases. So a little bit of jockeying right there potentially for the rest of the season in that division. And then the AC Seaver, the closest division, one of the closer divisions right now. The Castroville Mashers at 59 and 41, up six games. On the Calvin Ball All-Stars. Yeah, made the uh, postseason for the first time last week. The Calvin Ball All-Stars. They're in a decent spot for a playoff position right now in the American Conference. Move over to the National Conference East Division. We have the Park Slope Bourbon Bros in first place. With a record of 59 and 42. Five games up on the Elysian Fields 9. Over in the NC Central, the Watertown Herons and Mike ABC, they are running away with the NC Central Division right now. 13 games up and a 59 and 40 record. Holy cow. 13 games up on the North Bend Acer. Wow. NC West Division, the Houston Slump Busters. At 58 and 43 are up two games on the new Barn Spartans. So pretty good stuff right there. Seven games up on the Saber-Toothed Tigers. And finally, in the NC Aaron Division, one of the more closer divisions tonight, we have the Balking Dead in first place, a half game up on the Scarborough Titans and Tigers, I should say, and three games up on the Philadelphia Snowball. So... Some fun division races going on right now in Perfect League. Should be fun to see how it all comes down to the wire. And we will see which two teams are going to be on top of the world of Perfect Team this Sunday night with the Perfect League World Series. Alrighty, so... Next up, we have a couple of limited edition cards to start out our content for the evening. And we start out with a guy that is probably familiar to recent Toronto Blue Jays fans. He has hit one of the most famous home runs in postseason history. And that, my friends, is 93 overall, Jose Bautista. From the 2015 Toronto Blue Jays 25 copy limited edition card. Look at this guy right here. 64 BABIP, 112 power, 72 avoid K, 94 contact, 81 gap, and 1 
hundred I. Wow. Look at the look at the power. Look at the eye on this guy. This this is a fun card right here. 111 power against lefties, 112 power against righties. Not a lot of splits on this Jose Bautista card. Not even. Ah, oh, shoot. I did type in NLDS, didn't I? Wow. Wow. I forgot. I, I, wow. That was a whee on my part right there. My goodness. Oh, man. Can play third base. He can play right field. He is technically qualified to learn center field. I mean, if you really, if you really want, if you really want to play him in center, I mean, you can certainly try, maybe, potentially. Uh, 23 speed, 79 base running and 51, 79 stealing and 51 base running as well. 2015 season, not Jose Bautista's best season, but it is a very good season as well 250 377 536 on the slash line 40 home runs 114 rbi a 145 ops plus he was an all-star that year finished eighth in al mvp led the al with 110 walks which is why you see a big old i rating on this card and of course he hit that famous home run in the 2015 American League Division Series for the Blue Jays against the Rangers. The bat flip heard all around the world. Oh, man. Jose Bautista from the 2015 Toronto Blue Jays in Perfect Team 23. Oh, man. That, this is a fun card right here. Big power, big eye. A lot of people going to like this card. All right, next up. Our final limited edition card of the night. We go to the pitcher's mound for this one. And we go, we go back a little ways. And that is where we find our next guy. It is 99 overall, Camilo Pascal from the 1963 Minnesota Twins. 95 stuff, 96 movement, and 90 control. Fastball, curveball, changeup combo. A little bit better against lefties than he is against righties 97 stuff 98 movement and 90 control against lefties 94 stuff 95 control 95 movement and 89 control against righties not bad right here 94 stamina 70 on the hold runners very good curveball on this guy you know this this guy fun starting pitcher right here and he was a great starting pitcher in the 1960 Three season for the Twins, 21 and nine with a 2.46 ERA, a 2.97 FIP, 7.3 strikeouts per nine, 2.9 walks per nine. So the walks, tiny bit worrisome that year, but still not terrible. Uh, led the American League with 18 complete games that year, 202 strikeouts. Also led the American League, finished 12th in the AL MVP vote, and he had 6.1 wins above replacement on the year is he a righty well funny you should ask because he was a right-handed pitcher so we're talking about a guy with some reverse splits right here and that is fantastic so camilo pascal 25 copy limited edition in perfect team 23 yeah he did have some good years for the twins there for quite a few years agreed Agreed. Alrighty. So. Let's go now. To some tournament information. And the big tournament that everybody has been waiting for. Has been the Perfect Team Master Series. So let's take a look at that right now. The Perfect Team Master Series. Is next week. Saturday. October 29th. Beginning at noon Eastern with finals coverage on the Out of the Park Developments Twitch channel. Now, this is comprising of the 64 teams who have finished in the top four of each of the first four Perfect Team Championship Series tournaments. And then the top 32 teams in the Perfect Team Master Series will receive Perfect Team Master Series exclusive rewards. While first place... 
will get a card that is freaking hot, and I can't wait to show it off tonight. Ah! All right, now, a lot of people have been wondering what format this is going to be, because because I know that we're kind of mixing up you know, those who qualified via the perfect draft route, those who qualified via traditional tournaments. So when, when you kind of mash them all together, I mean, you, you have to choose something. You know, you, you, you kind of have to choose one or the other, you know, either perfect draft or a traditional-ish tournament. And the team has come up with this format. And that is... Special Edition Gold Floor 2300 Cap with a Modern Run Environment and a DH. Special Edition Cards with a Gold Floor 2300 Cap. Should be an interesting format right here. You know, get to use some Special Edition Cards. You know, some Build-A-Lineup Cards. Um, some, I believe, Platinum Series are a part of that as well. Some Tournament Rewards. You know, quite a few, quite a few guys, quite a few guys you can use here with this format. So, should be interesting to see how it all goes down. Alrighty, so, hey, I mean, you never know. The perfect draft teams, you know, they could, they could definitely make a run here. Anybody can make a run with this. So, there you go. There you go. Alright, but now, who, what are the prizes that are going to be happening? Well, Let's take a look at the cards that they will be playing for in the Perfect Team Master Series. And we start with the sixth, the 17th through, I believe the, uh, I, I messed up the numbers here. This will be the 17th through 32nd place prize. And it is going to be 84 overall Greg Olson peak card. From the Baltimore Orioles. 99 stuff, 108 movement, and 65 control. Ooh, hot card right here. Big stuff, big movement, control. Definitely a little worrisome. I mean, that was kind of, you know, indicative of, of Greg Olson's career. Um, fastball, curveball, and sinker combo on this one. Look at this, look at the splits against righties here. 102 stuff. 112 movement and 67 control. Pretty good fastball, curveball, and sinker for this Greg Olson card. Uh, played from 1988 to 2001. 622 games, 217 saves with a 3.46 ERA. He was AL Rookie of the Year in 1989. Sixth in the AL Cy Young Award that year and 12th in MVP. He had that good of a rookie season. He was also an all-star in the 1990 season. Career seven, had a career almost eight strikeouts per nine with 4.4 walks per nine as well. So that is the 17th through 32nd place prize for the Perfect Team Master Series. Now, you go up a little bit and let's see what the 9th through 16th place prize is. And this is a pretty... This is a pretty fun one right here. This is a pretty fun one right here. And that is 88 overall Manny Sangian from the Pittsburgh Pirates. 79 Babbitt, 50 power, 99 avoid K, 90 contact, 80 gap power, and 44 I. Look at the splits against lefties here. These are some fun splits. 116 avoid K. 100 contact, 90 gap power, 48 I, 50 power, and 79 Babbitt against lefties. Fun stuff right here. 72 catcher ability and 88 catcher arm. So a little bit low on some of the catcher defense, but still pretty fun hitting card right here as well. And he was a pretty decent hitter in his entire career. 296, 326, 398. Very respectable for a very good hitting catcher. 65 homers, 585 RBI, uh, three-time All-Star, eighth in MVP in 1971, a career 6.2% strikeout rate. That's pretty darn low given the league averages uh, in his career. 4.1% walk rate, so doesn't quite walk very often, which I mean, that kind of, you know, constitutes the low eye on the card. But he also caught 39% caught stealing. That's not bad right there. 
especially for a guy like Sandia. All right, so there you go. That is the ninth through 16th place prize. Yeah, this is 9th through 16th place prize. I accidentally did some typos. I've, I've been busy all week, so so I've kind of had to balance this in my regular job. So uh, apologies for the uh, for any, uh, you know, typos here. I don't think there will be any typos the rest of the way, so we'll see. Alrighty, so next up, the 5th through 8th place prize is 94 overall, Ken Griffey from the Cincinnati Reds. 85 Babbitt, 56 power, 90 avoid K, 95 contact, 99 gap power, and 68 on the eye. Look at the splits against righties here. This is not bad. 85 Babbitt, 59 power, 94 avoid K, 98 contact, 98 gap power, and 72 on the eye. Ken Griffey, senior, not junior, senior. 67 speed, 90 stealing, and 79 base running. 71 on the outfield range, 80 on the error, and 60 on the arm. Can play first base, left field, center field, and right field. And Ken Griffey, not a bad hitter in his career. 296, 359, 431 in his career. 152 homers, 859 RBI. He was a three-time All-Star, eighth in MVP in 1976. Eight seasons of 10-plus homers, double-digit homers, really. And career 34 and a half wins above replacement not bad not bad so there you go fifth through eighth place ken griffey from the cincinnati reds next up the third and fourth place prize and it is 98 overall willie mcgee from the st louis cardinals fun center field card 109 babbitt 38 power 67 avoid k 102 contact 97 gap power in 59 on the eye. 93 range, 83 error, and 83 on the outfield arm. Can play left, can play center, can play right. Good speed on him. 90 speed, 101 stealing, 95 base running. Very good contact hitting center fielder here. 295, 333, 396 in his career. 352 stolen bases and 856 RBI. Four-time All-Star, three-time Gold Glove, 1985 NL MVP, led the NL in average hits and triples in, I believe, 1985 that year. So there you go. Willie McGee, third and fourth place prize. Second place. Second place. We'll get 100 overall, Charlie Buffington. Charlie Buffington. This is a Fun pitcher right here. 90 stuff, 106 movement, 87 control, fastball, curveball, changeup combo. Little bit splitty against righties. 97 stuff, 110 movement, 91 control, but still fairly serviceable against lefties. 82 stuff, 102 movement, and 83 control. Lots of stamina, 110 stamina on this guy. Pitcher, he can also hit a little bit. I mean, 51 contacts, not that great, but still. Uh, career was from 1882 to 1892 with a 233 and 152 record. 296 ERA, 115 ERA plus, 48 wins in 1884. Seven seasons of 20 wins, 1,700 strikeouts, the ninth highest of the 19th century. So there you go, Charlie Buffington, second place. For first place, first place, this guy right here, probably one of the hotter cards that we have ever released this year. And that is 100 overall, Jackie Robinson from 1949, Brooklyn Dodgers, 99 Babip, 69 power, 98 avoid K, 115 contact, 111 gap power, and 105 on the eye. And barely, ba not a whole lot of splits to talk about right here. 99 Babip on both sides, 70 power against lefties, 69 power against righties. 
98 avoid K against both sides. Only a one point golf in contact between lefties and righties. Gap power, I mean, seven point gaps, not bad. And then a two point I in gap between, I mean, I, I mean, between lefties and righties. He can play first, he can play second, he can play third, he can play left field. Woo! Woo! 102 range, 109 error, 79 arm, and 103 on the turn, double play. 90 range, 78 outfield error, and 80 on the outfield arm. Whew. And look at the speed stealing and base running. 103 speed, 105 stealing, 105 on the base running, 100 on the sack bunt, 100 on the bunt for hit. This is a fun card right here that anyone would want to win in the Perfect Team Master Series. 342, 432, 528 on the slash line. 16 homers, 124 RBI, 37 stolen bases, and 9.3 wins above replacement. He was the NL MVP this year. He was also an all-star. Led the NL in batting average, stolen base, sacrifice, hits even. And... Set career highs in RBIs, stolen base, and triples this year as well. So there you go. Jackie Robinson, the grand prize of the Perfect Team Master Series. But that's not all that first place gets. That's not all. Because first place will also get every one of the second through 32nd place rewards. Not bad, not bad, but that's still not all. Each place tier will also get all the cards below their tier as additional prizes. So second place will get Buffington, McGee, Griffey, Sangian, and Greg Olson. Third and fourth will get McGee, Griffey, Sangian, and Olson. Fifth through eighth will get Griffey, Sangian, and Olson, and so on and so forth. So, a lot of cards going to each prize tier. There is no seating. There is no seating for the tournament. So, there you go. Pretty cool stuff. But, is there more? Yeah, there's still more. I'm freaking Billy Mays here tonight, folks. There is still more. Because the first place winner will also get the final spot in the Perfect Team World Championship. The live managed head-to-head -head Perfect Team game to be broadcast live on Twitch, date to be determined at this point. They will be facing off with the Seattle Aftershocks, owned by Draggle Fred. That's going to be fun. Live managed game with me as your host. That's going to be a fun, fun time. So the winner of the Perfect Team Master Series gets the final spot in the Perfect Team World Championship. Basically what you saw me and Rich do earlier this week on Monday. And the logo? Yeah, the logo's awesome. <laughs> the logo is so freaking awesome. Alrighty, folks. Well, there is your tournament info. There is your tournament info for the Perfect Team Master Series. Good luck to everybody. Good luck to everybody when on the 29th for the Perfect Team Master Series series all right let's get to the big content of the evening cooperstown club three that's right this is the third wave of mission reward cards for some sweet hall of fame players so for those of you who are not familiar with how cooperstown club works there will be seven missions for each wave of Cooperstown Club mission sets, all based around a certain theme. 
hits, wins above replacement, control, power, catchers, relievers, and extra base hits. Now, there will be five total waves of Cooperstown Club missions throughout the fall, and this is the third of those waves. And for each mission you complete, you will receive a player card as a reward. And if you complete all seven missions in the wave, you will receive the topper card that we will show off near the end of this show. Now, mission completion is required to receive the topper card, not the cards you get from completing the missions. And if you complete all the missions in all five ways, you will receive two overall topper cards. So, let's start off the cards tonight. And we start off with our catcher program reward for Cooperstown Club number three. And this is a fairly interesting one, if I do recall correctly. And that is, uh, let me let me double check something just really quickly before I show off this card. Because I want to double check something before before I go to the next slide. Make sure that everything's make sure that everything is correct with this one. Just want to make sure of one quick little thing. Where is it? Where is it? Okay, yeah. So there's there is there is a little bit of a there is a little bit, I believe, of a correction I believe we need to make here. So let's go ahead and show it off. It is 100 overall, Mickey Cochran from the Philadelphia A's. 80 BABIP, 75 power, 97 avoid K, 100 contact, 99 gap power, 99 I. A lot of blue on this one here. Little bit shady toward righties here, a little bit splitty toward righties, but it's not by too much. Uh, defensively, right now on the slide, it's listed as 85 ability and 83 arm. However, I believe, um, I believe that the catcher ability is just a tiny bit off. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I think that is supposed to be 92 on the catcher ability. So, uh, I will double check that once the card goes live. Um, but I, I have it on, uh, I have it as 92 right now. So I'm going to double check with Nico, make sure that that is correct on that. But either way, this is a fun card right here. You know, plenty of eye, plenty of contact on this one. Uh, 42 speed, 63 stealing, and 52 on the base running. is a pretty good sack bunter as well. 95 sack bunt, 95 on the bunt for hit. Uh, yeah, it's uh, definitely something we'll have to double check most definitely. Um, 320, 419, 478 on the slash line, 64 homers and 119 RBI. Two time AL MVP in 1928 and 1934. I believe the 1934 one was when he was with the Detroit Tigers, by the way. Two time All Star. He had 10 seasons of an on base percentage over 400. That is crazy. That is crazy how much, how often this guy gets on base. Caught 39% of base runners trying to steal. And he made the Hall of Fame in 1947. So this is this is a kind of an interesting catcher right here. You know, if you're wanting a guy who can make contact, a guy who can get on base quite often, a guy who probably won't strike out too much, this is your guy right here. Mickey Cochran from the Philadelphia A's. In perfect team 23. Yeah, and these are these are mission rewards. These are not packable cards. Not packable cards. And I see Nicolino is checking. All right, good. Good. All right, next up. Next up on the list, we have we have our our wins above replacement program reward. And if you think that that one Philadelphia A was good, how about another Philadelphia A? And we go to Eddie Plank, 100 overall peak 
lefty starter 75 stuff 109 movement and 90 control has some interesting splits here you're gonna get a little bit more movement and stuff against righties with this lefty with this lefty pitcher but you're gonna get a little more control against lefties with this lefty pitcher uh 65 fastball 91 curveball and 66 on the changeup 109 stamina and 72 on the hold runner so some interesting splits here on this guy uh 326 and 194 in his career from 1901 to 1917 a 235 era and a 122 era plus he is an eight time 20 game winner 69 career shutouts uh and he was the first left-handed pitcher to win 200 games and the first lefty to win 300 games so pretty cool accomplishments right there for this guy 87 and a half career war which for the time pretty darn good and he made it into the hall of fame in 1946 so eddie plank lefty starter from the philadelphia a's in perfect team 23 all right now let's move on to our our power program reward our power program reward and you know what there have been some great power hitters in the history of baseball but this is a pretty and this is a pretty good one right here and that guy we go to the we go to like probably the beginning of the minnesota twins for this one and that my friends is 100 overall first baseman harman killebrew from the minnesota twins 68 babbitt 122 power 71 avoid k 101 contact 78 gap power and 107 i and look at the splits against lefties here 126 power 104 contact and 110 on the eye now he's gonna strike out a little bit probably won't hit too many extra base hits he might have a few here and there but this guy's job is to hit dangers he can play first he can play third decently and he can play a little bit of left field 68 range 69 error 72 arm and 62 on the turn double play outfield range 68 range 66 error and 57 on the arm i believe Harmon is a righty yes let me just double check Harmon killabrew is a righty batter yes now don't make don't let him steal 15 speed 73 stealing 44 on the base running Eh, don't don't let him steal but if you're looking for dingers if you're looking for dingers this is your guy 256 376 509 career slash line with 573 career homers 1584 rbi he was the 1969 mvp he was a 13 time all-star led the al in home runs six times had 840 homer seasons that is insane led the al in walks four times and made it into the hall of fame in 1984 so he has some bona fides in terms of getting on base he has some bona fides in hitting dingers not bad so there you go Harmon killebrew from the minnesota twins in perfect team 23 all right next up is our hits program reward our hits program reward for the evening and we go we go to the 80s and maybe a little bit of the 90s as well for our next card and that is 100 overall third baseman paul molitor from the milwaukee brewers 89 babbitt 56 power 89 avoid k 98 contact 108 gap power and 65 on the eye look at the splits against lefties right here 
90 BABIP, 66 power, 102 avoid K, 108 contact, 117 on the gap power, and 75 on the eye. And this guy, a little bit of infield utility here. That can be pretty good. Uh, first base, second base, third base, 85 range, 69 error, 101 on the infield arm, and 69 on the turn double play. Paul Molitor, a good righty hitter right here at the very least. Uh, let me just double check to make sure he's not a switchy. He is a, he is a right-handed batter. He is a right-handed batter. Um, 79 speed, 89 stealing, and 84 base running as well. Um, hit 306, 369, 448 in his career with 234 homers, 1,307 RBIs. He was a seven-time All-Star, four-time Silver Slugger, finished top 10 in MVP four times in his career, led MLB in hits three times, all of them over 200 hits in those le MLB leading seasons. 3,319 career hits for Paul Molitor and made it to the Hall of Fame in 2004. He's only one of a handful of guys to have a 300 career average, over 3,000 hits, and over 500 career stolen bases. Pretty cool stuff right there. So he can hit, he can get on base a little bit, he can steal a few. Not bad. Not bad. Paul Molitor, third baseman from the Milwaukee Brewers in perfect team 23. Alrighty, next up, next up we go to our control program reward. And you know, we go, we go a little bit up north for this one. We're going to go to Canada for this one. And it'll be a familiar name to Toronto Blue Jays fans. And that is 100 overall Toronto Blue Jays legend, Roy Halladay. Roy Halladay getting his second 100 overall card. This one, a mission reward of the cycle. 91 stuff, 99 movement, and 98 control. Not too splitty on this guy. 92 stuff, 99 movement, and 99 control against lefties. 90 stuff, 98 movement, and 98 control against righties. He's a ground ball pitcher. A fastball, curveball, changeup, sinker, splitter, and cutter combo right there. 99 stamina and 54 on the hold runners. This is a this is a pretty good card right here. This is a pretty darn good card. You know, pair him with a few other ground ballers in your rotation. Put a good defense behind him. He is going to be pretty darn good. 1998 to 2013 in Roy Halladay's career, 203 and 105 record with a 338 ERA, a 1.9 walks per nine in his career from 2003 to 2011, arguably the peak of Roy Halladay's career. He had the lowest walks per nine in baseball of pitchers with less than a three ERA. That is pretty darn good. 1.4 walks per nine. So he really, really limited walks in his career. Pretty cool stuff. And he posthumously went into the Hall of Fame in 2019. Gone too soon, if you ask me. But there you go. Roy Halladay, 100 overall. Righty starter with some reverse splits, by the way. A little bit better against lefties than he is against righties. In perfect team 23. Alrighty, next up. Next up, we have. We have our reliever program reward. Oh boy. Oh man. There are some. There, there aren't that many relievers in the Hall of Fame. We do understand that. But the relievers that are in are pretty darn good ones. And no, it's not Sam Malone. But you know what? If we're talking about guys out West who played for teams out in the West, this guy, pretty good. Ladies and gentlemen, 
get Hell's Bells going in the background because we have Trevor Hoffman from the San Diego Padres. 106 stuff, 102 movement, and 100 control. Look at the stuff against righties here. 109 stuff, 104 movement, and 101 on the control with 103 stuff, 99 movement, and 99 control against lefties as well. Hoo-wee! Fastball, slider, curveball, and changeup combo right here. That changeup, oh my god, that changeup. Oh man. Now, a bit of extreme fly ball, so something to be a little wary about with this card. But 97 to 99 velocity, pretty good stuff. 100 plus stuff, 100 plus movement, 100 plus control overall. This guy, definitely up there in the upper echelon of relievers in this game at this point. Oh man, Trevor Hoffman. You know, I've, I've watched a, quite a bit of Trevor Hoffman growing up. And my God, this guy was so good. 1993 to 2010, I, I pretty much watched maybe the late stages of his career, to be quite honest with you. 1,035 games, 601 career saves. 601 saves. He was the all-time saves leader for quite a bit, up until 2011. That's how good Trevor Hoffman was. 287 ERA in his career. Led the NL in saves twice. Seven-time All-Star. He actually finished top 10 in Cy Young Award voting four times. Four times in his career. And he made it into the Hall of Fame deservingly in 2018. So there you go. Trevor Hoffman, 100 overall closer from the San Diego Padres in Perfect Team 23. Alrighty, next up, next up, our final program reward for the evening before we show off the topper, and this is our extra base hit program reward, but this guy up here, this guy that we're going to show, he doesn't just hit extra base hits, no, 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 this guy, this guy, this guy can hit dingers as well. And that, my friends, is 100 overall center fielder from the New York Yankees. It is Joe DiMaggio. Where has he gone? He has gone into Cooperstown Club 3. 83 Babbitt, 103 power, 102 avoid K, 116 contact, 105 gap power, and 74 on the eye. And look at the splits against lefties. 85 Babbitt, 121 power, 103 avoid K, 125 contact, 110 gap power, 70 AI. Can play kind of a decent center field. Now, if you wanted to train him up in other positions, unfortunately you can't. You had to go back to the 30s and the 40s and talk to the Yankees manager about maybe putting Joe DiMaggio in left field and right field a little more. Just say it. 90 range, 102 error, and 76 on the outfield arm. This guy, this guy's gonna hit. This guy is definitely going to hit. He cannot train in left field and right field. He cannot. He has not met, I don't believe he has met the thresholds of 5% of career games in left and right to be able to be trained in left and right. From 1936 to 1951, Joe DiMaggio, definitely solid, solid player in those Yankee, on those Yankees teams. 325, 398, 579 with 361 career homers, 1,000 537 RBI. He was a three-time MVP, 13-time All-Star, won the batting title twice even, had seven seasons of more than 30 doubles. He had eight seasons 
where he had more than 10 triples. Triples. This guy could definitely run the bases decently. Made the Hall of Fame in 1955. And he had the streak. That 62, 63 game hitting streak. The famous hitting streak. Joe DiMaggio. This is a fun card right here. Very, very fun card. 56. 56. Why why am I saying why am I saying 62? I must be thinking of, of the homers. I must be thinking homers. I must I must be thinking of the uh, of the, uh, the 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 championship series that's going on right now. I'm thinking of hey Aaron Judge at 62 homers. That's a number going through my head. I should say that out of my mouth hole. But yeah, Joe DiMaggio, the 56 game hitting streak. There you go, Joe DiMaggio, 100 overall from the New York Yankees. In perfect team, 23. All righty, and finally. Final, our overall topper reward for Cooperstown Club 3. Oh, man. I love this card. When I saw this card, man, I, 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 love, I like this card. I really do. And I hope you do, too. Because it is one of the greatest left-handed pitchers in baseball history. And that, my friends, is 100 overall, Sandy Koufax from the Dodgers, 124 stuff, 95 movement, 94 control, little bit of reverse splits a little bit, more stuff against righties than he has against lefties, 119 stuff, 95 movement, 95 control against lefties, 125 Stuff, 95 movement, 93 control against righties. Fastball, curveball, forkball, change up right here. 100 stamina and 78 on the hold runners. Oh my goodness, what a card we have here. Oh man, we already had the bronze Sandy Koufax back in his early years as a Dodger. Now we have the peak Sandy Koufax. In his career from 1955 to 1966, he went 165 and 87 with a 276 ERA, 9.3 strikeouts per nine, 3.2 walks per nine. He was the 1963 MVP. He he was very close to winning a cup, at least a couple more uh, MVPs. Three times Cy Young Award winner was definitely in the mix for a couple more. Led the NL in ERA five years in a row from 62 to 66. This guy, man, he retired early because of arthritis. And it's just kind of, you know, one of those, one of those great what if stories that we mention often here on this show. What if Sandy Koufax never retired? How great could he have been? What kind of records could he have set? But man, when he was good, man, when he was on. He was the greatest damn pitcher alive. Wow. Sandy Koufax, 100 overall from the Dodgers in perfect team 23. So there you go. There's our Cooperstown Club three cards for the evening. Eddie Plank, Harmon Killebrew, Joe DiMaggio, Mickey Cochran, Paul Molitor, Roy Halladay, Sandy Koufax, and... Trevor Hoffman. Awesome. Wonderful, wonderful cards tonight. And I do have confirmation on Mickey Cochran's ratings. Um, it is indeed 92 catcher ability. So when I when I post the uh slides later in the Discord, I will make sure that that is updated correctly. So it is 92, it is supposed to be 92 catcher ability. So there you go. All righty. Let's move on real quick before we sign off for the evening. Time for the tournament standings. The tournament standings. Let's congratulate last week's tournament top 10. The Daily Traditional Tournaments, DR Sox or Dr. Sox, however you want to pronounce it, 
He finished in first place with the Balking Dead, 274 points last week in the Daily Traditional Tournaments. Galoi in the GKT, GKT in second with 223 points. Draggle Fred and the Seattle Aftershocks with 180 points finishing in third. Red Eclipse, DP11, Admiral Relativity, Warhawk 3, RDT24, Slensner, and Tokyo finishing out the top 10 over there last week. In the weekly traditional tournaments last week, Snailman and the FFS Snails finishing in first with 120 points. Aster 31 in the Minneapolis Millers in second with 100 points. Mr. Audit and the Mediocres in, or the Meteokers in third place with 98 points. Tech 15, C. Whitman, Doc B15, BKN Mets fan, C. Steinhardt, Jake P316, and Tokyo finishing out the top 10 in the weekly traditional. Over in the perfect draft realm, we had Khan in the Vlad News Bears winning the week last week with 91 points. The Houston won in the not so perfect team, finishing in second, 20 points behind with 71. Excuse me, SW2 and Doom Doom Bengals in third place with 70 points. Then we had Des223, Robbie Sachs, Monter Don, 808 Jers, Baggy Illis, Gracie Frank, and Philo1. Rounding out the top 10 in the daily perfect drafts. And then in the weekly perfect drafts, Moncoco and the Wooster. Woo! With 54 points, finishing in first place last week. Lertis 2 and the Chicago Wind Sox in second place with 41 points. Own the World 24 in the Randy Johnson in the big units, finishing in third place last week with 37 points. Jake P3164, C. Whitman, C. Jensen, Isaac981215, BJ Clout, Andy the G, and Real Hot Snow finishing in the top 10. All right, so good stuff last week, but how are the standings looking like right now? Let's take a look at the current standings for week 21 as of 5 p.m. Eastern today, October 20th. The daily traditional tournaments look a little something like this. We have Galoi in first place right now at this moment with 120 points. Red Eclipse and the Palatine Plutos in second with 111 points. KJ22 and the Reunion Tour in third place with 105 points. DR Socks or Dr. Socks finishing in fourth. DPL1, Draggle Fred, RDT24, Sand Mames, Weldon06, and Ace Rutherford. Rounding out the top 10 so far this week. In the weekly traditional tournaments, Jake P316 and the Chad Golden Rumps. Right now in first place with 58 points. Bahoot and the California Halos in second place with 55 points. Snailman in third with 49 points. Adam P at Day, FJC1, Mac Jacks, Esther31, Tokyo. And Hip and Knee Doc and C. Whitman rounding out the top 10 in the weekly traditionals. And finally, let's take a look at how the weekly perfect draft, or at least the perfect drafts, have sorted out so far. In the daily perfect draft tournaments, we had Matt DJ1985 in first place right now with his Springfield Ohio 9 with 46 points. Admiral Relativity in second place with the Lamorinda Star Crushers with 45 points. Go Cubs Go 16 in the Webster Grove. Supercells in third with 44 points. KJ22 in the Reunion Tour. Asheville Boomsticks, MJP31, Shoeless Johan, The Huseman 1, Fenster PSU, and Midnight Train rounding out the top 10 so far this week in the Daily Perfect Drafts. And in the Weekly Perfect Drafts, we have Flailing Fork and the Diamond Bar Lawman. With 31 points leading the way right now this week. Jake P3162 in the Hulktown Smashers in second place with 26. Ale Simeon in the Perugia Warriors in third with 26 points. With NCAP99, Skodix, TD11, TwanLX2000, GenXer69, VetPep10, and Go Mets Go finishing out the top 10. So there you go. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in to tonight's episode of This Week in Perfect Team. Oh, man. Thank you so much for tuning in. Really appreciate y'all being here. I'll be back here tomorrow night. Tomorrow night is the return 
It is the return of the Friday showdown to the Twitch airwaves. That is right. That is right. I am done covering high school football for the year. Let's freaking go. Woo. All right. That that's going to be that's going to be fun tomorrow night. And then on Sunday night, as always, we will have the Perfect League World Series for the 2045 season, featuring two of the best teams in Perfect Team, whichever they may be. So stay tuned for that this coming weekend. All right. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great night. Oh, man. I'll see you tomorrow for the Friday Showdown. This has been DishNet34, signing out. Have a great night, everybody.